In this video, we'll be using the 555 timer in monostable mode. I'm going to show you how to wire it up to do that. So, as you can see here, we have a divot at the top of the chip there, and then this little circle divot here on the left. Some integrated circuits have only one or the other, but it should have either one or the other. And you put that end of the integrated circuit on the top. And then when you do that, the pins on the left here are 1, 2, 3, 4, and then over here, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right now we have pin 1 connected directly to ground, and pin 8 directly to the positive side of the power source. Right over there, and then the negative side over here for the uh, gray jumper here. That's connected to pin number 1. So, that's going to power the integrated circuit, and also with the 555 timer, uh, generally circuits need the uh, power source voltage as a reference voltage and as voltages change in other parts of the circuit then changes happen based on those voltages we're not going to go into that too much now but just be aware of that the reference voltage here a lot of uh, parts of the circuits depend on knowing what that reference voltage is to do something now I also have this little jumper between uh, 6 down here and 7 and for this circuit we need to connect those directly this little jumper it's easy to lose that in fact I lost one before I started doing this video and I'll probably step on it someday but in any case I'm gonna leave it in the board there and uh, we'll look at what that's doing a little more later on now we have the switch up here and I have a resistor here so this circuit we're going to need uh, just one switch, and when we close the switch, we're going to put it to pin 2. Pin 2 is the trigger, and then uh, that will give us a negative voltage or a ground to the trigger. But uh, before I hit the button, this resistor comes directly to the jumper. This resistor is to the positive rail, so that will keep a positive voltage on the trigger which keeps the trigger from activating. It's activated with the uh, negative voltage or ground. So it's going to hold it slightly positive, but when I hit the switch, that'll give it a more negative voltage and it will set the trigger off. So now we come to pin 4. Pin 4 in this circuit just stays positive. So we connect it directly to the positive side of the uh, power supply rail. Now, we'll go to the output. So the outputs here, this is what uh, actually turns on and off to do something. So we're going to attach our load. First, we're going to put a protective resistor. Again, I'm using a 2 kilo ohm resistor, 2,000 ohm resistor to protect an LED. Now, the LED, of course, this is only going to be an on-off either positive 9 volts or uh, 0 volts approximately so we want the long lead the anode connected to the resistor and the short lead the cathode connected to this jumper which goes to ground so uh, when the timers off this will be about 0 volts when it turns on we'll have about 9 volts to come to 0 volts here and the LED will turn on so now we're going to add the capacitor. So I'm going to use a 47 microfarad capacitor. Of course you can use pretty much any value you want, but uh, the capacitance is one of the factors in how long the circuit uh, operates. We'll look at that later, but in any case we need, this is a polarized capacitor, but the uh, positive side goes to pin 6. And then the negative side, we'll just put directly to ground. That will make sure that this side's always more negative than the other side. And now we'll add the last component, which is a resistor that will control the charge time of the capacitor. We have a little jumper there, as I said before, between 6 and 7. Seven's up here. And so we just uh, put the resistor to uh, pin 7 and again we have that little jumper connecting it to the capacitor here this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor the value is not crucial 
but it determines the charge time of the capacitor. As you can see, the resistor is directly to the positive rail, comes to the jumper, which connects to the capacitor, and the other side of the capacitor is on the negative rail. So the capacitor is going to naturally charge. The only way for it to discharge is actually through pin 7. And now our circuit's built. Uh, this component, by the way, is not doing anything. It's not wired into there. It's just uh, it's hard on the board inserting and pulling those out, so I just leave it there. I have uh, jumper wires down here to connect both rails, so when I apply power to either rail, it'll reach both of them equally. And so our circuit's build, and I'll show you how this works. We have the uh, battery plugged into the rail now, so both rails have power, as I said. When I hit the switch, now you'll notice the LED stays on for a bit, but then it turns off. So right now it's in the stable mode. That's why it's monostable, it has one stable mode. When I hit the switch, you see it changes, but then it jumps back. So the LED being, LED being on is not stable. It being off is stable. There's one stable mode. And uh, so we were using the 10 kilo ohm resistor, as I said before. Now we'll take that out and we'll replace it with a 51 kilo ohm resistor. I got it out of this pack here, 51 kilo ohm, so about five times as much resistance. And now you can see the LED stays on about five times as long. Now if we used a bigger resistor, uh, a bigger uh, capacitor, I should say, then it would be longer still. It's the value of both of these components. The bigger each one of these is, the longer the LED will stay on. And the smaller the values of each of them, the shorter this will be on. So you adjust this depending on the uh, capacitor and resistor you want to use. But it's their values together. So now to wrap this up, I want to mention a few things. This generally applies to all uh, circuits for the most part. But when you're done, make sure you at least remove the battery. I'm actually going to take this completely apart. But uh, this circuit will always be using power. It may not be a whole lot, but it will drain the battery over time. So you want to make sure to remove the battery as soon as you're done. Now another thing I want to mention, I took some multimeter measurements while I was doing this. I'll uh, probably do that in the next video. But uh, the capacitor in the circuit when before you hit the switch is actually uh, discharged. It's about zero volts. And then when you hit the switch, and the LED turns on, remember I removed the battery so it's not going to do it now, but when you hit the switch and the LED turns on, the capacitor actually starts charging to until it gets about two-thirds of the uh, power supply voltage. As I said before, this part of the circuit monitors the power supply voltage and between two-thirds and one-thirds it does different things for different circuits. So the capacitor charged about two-thirds and then the LED turns off and the capacitor instantly discharges. So I thought I'd just throw that in there. I'll uh, spend more time on that in an upcoming video. But uh, in any case, since we have a capacitor, it's a good idea to make sure to discharge it. Since we were using low voltage, I'm not worried about getting shocked. So I'll just pick it up and put it on one rail. That'll make sure it discharges. That uh, help protect other components if I put this into another circuit and it still has a charge it might zap a component that's sensitive to that so you want to make sure capacitors are discharged uh, after every use 